Coming up on New Day Cleveland, we're celebrating all things fall. From apple picking to pumpkin patches, we've got your autumn bucket list covered. New Day Cleveland starts right now. Nothing says autumn like a trip to an orchard. Fresh apple cider, donuts, and a whole lot more. And that's what you can find at Brant's Apple Orchard. Brant's Apple Orchard is located at 4749 Double Road in Ashtabula County. We are a market, a farmer's market, cider mill, and bakery. There's a lot to experience. I'm mean, just from the moment you walk in here, you're gonna smell the apples, the fresh smell of the apples, the apple cider that was pressed, the donuts that we make in the bakery. It's just a feeling of like, oh gosh, this is really nice. You come here, you basically can pick your apples. We have a full market where you can get jams, jellies, popcorn, uh, chocolates. We have a full bakery that has apple pies, pumpkin pies, donuts. We do a variety of donuts. We do a special donut uh, every day. So it could be uh, blueberry, it could be cherry. We have food that you can order, wraps. We have chicken salad sandwiches, soups. There's a variety of things that we do. And we do specials all the time too. What's popular is our apple pies. Pumpkin pies are popular too, but I'd say apple because we are an apple orchard is our most popular thing, besides our donuts. So we have our apple cider donut, that cinnamon sugar on that, everybody loves it, nice and warm, perfect with like a hot cup of cider or coffee. People buy them by the dozen, half dozen. Uh, we have turnovers that we make with our apples. We have a variety of drinks too, so we have just the Simple, just apple cider slushy, which is just frozen cider. But we do a combination of like creamy caramel ones, we do hot coffees, we do hot ciders. So we have specialty drinks too that you can order. Well, what's unique about us is we don't prepackage our apples. So we have apples in bins, so you can actually mix and match your apples. So if you want a special variety for a certain pie or maybe applesauce that you're making, you can just mix and match them and then we sell them by the pound. We have our apples from August through Thanksgiving is when we close, so we'll pick between when we open and we'll finish up in early November. We currently grow 27 different varieties. All of our apples here, we'll put them in this float tank. The apples will float to the top. They'll ride the conveyor belt. Oh, they'll go through a series of brushes to clean them and sanitize them a little bit. They go through the sizing chain. Once they hit the table down there, then they're judged for quality before they are put into the market for sale. The main thing is, is our, our cider is not pasteurized. So it's 100% apples, no sugar, no water, no preservatives. You're drinking basically an apple in a bottle. We do some you pick. Uh, we do have it on the weekends at times. Depending on the crop load, we'll have certain varieties. You know, our baking apples have a high demand for you pick, like Cortland and Macintosh. Maybe some Ida Reds are really good for pies. So people will come out here for you pick for those. Plus it's the experience and parents want to bring their kids out you know, to do apple picking as a family event. I love to see families come in. Um, basically, that's my favorite part, is actually walking outside in the yard and seeing kids, you know, play on the playground. We have a really unique playground that has a covered bridge and a little barn with a slide. And then I love to see families just playing cornhole or the kids feeding the fish in the pond. Love to see families go on our hay wagon rides or just even walking through the woods. I think it's important an aspect to the community because it gives families a place to go. You know, this area is known for wineries, but it's nice to know that you have a farmer's market and an apple orchard that you can go to in the fall season. Something to do in the fall. Brant's Apple Orchard is located on Dibble Road, and that's in Ashtabula. And you can view their seasonal hours online. Hey, we're talking about decorating the yard, your house, getting ready for fall, and how can you do better than this? Chad, tell them, how can you do better than this? You can't. You can't. You just can't. So Chad's at Lowe's. We're out here in Chagrin Falls, and when we talk about Lowe's, we're not talking about that 
big box store with all the stuff, lumber and stuff. We're talking about Lowe's has been here how long? Uh, we've been here since two, 1926. 1926. We're celebrating our 100th year anniversary in a couple of years. And you know what's really good about that is they grow all the stuff here, all these mums, all these plants, all these flowers. Yep. Uh, so we're growing annuals, we're growing some perennials, uh, some shrubs are being grown here, but mainly uh, you know, everything you see in this particular part of our showroom is, is everything we've grown. What's great about that too, folks, is the fact that when something's grown here, when you take it home, it's going to stay alive, it's going to be healthy, it's going to be good, and it's going to stay right. Grown local? Yeah. Lives longer. Okay, so we're in the fall season and you have your folks putting together these things, but a lot of people like to do it themselves. So what kind of pieces and parts can they find here? Well, you're going to find grasses, you're going to find mums, you're going to find pepper plants that blend in, you're going to find your trailing uh, sweet potato vine, pots, soil. You can get everything you need to be able to do it yourself, one stop. How about pumpkins? Absolutely. Some people call them pumpkins, but the kids call them pumpkins. Right? Well, we got pumpkins, we got all kinds of other gourds as well, yeah. hay. Because I was going to uh, ask you about the white, those white things. They're not pumpkins, huh? No. Nope. That's a gourd? That's a gourd. Okay. And what about the hay thing? So, you got so hay. you're gonna you can get bales of straw, mini bales of straw. You can get corn stalks here. You know, pretty yeah. much everything you need. Another thing too, like a lot of people are gardeners, so they they come here and they see some stuff here. You can guide them as to maybe what's a good idea and what's not a good idea this time of year. Absolutely, just bring a photo in, let us do the work. So I see all this great stuff, but I saw some planters over here that are pretty special. Outdoor yeah. planters? So, uh, you know, the ones that we're talking about are the bigger ones, bigger porch pots, they have a little bit taller. What's that big uh, silver one? That's a galvanized uh, planter with uh, fall plantings in it to give you some height. It's a uh, bigger scale. So this year, you can come here and buy that, you can put it together for them, but then they keep the pot and then they can come back and make it for themselves. Absolutely. You know, I spend so much time out here, it's like I forget about indoors. I mean, you got a lot of things going on in there. Like I know, sure. you know, we got Halloween and pumpkins and all that kind of stuff. We saw some Christmas cards. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a time where we're starting to blend all of our seasonal items, but our gift shop isn't all just about seasonal items. Sure, you're gonna find some Christmas stuff in there, but you're gonna find uh, pretty eccentric, uh, items in there that you're not going to find anywhere else. It's pretty uh, it's pretty unique. So yeah. house goods, comfort clothes, kids section, we got a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, so you, know, you come out here, you, you don't even think about that. You, know, you can wander in there and the next thing you know, you're finding new ways to keep your flowers grouped together and look great. How about, so you get, can you help people with fall plantings and that sort of thing too? Yes. Yeah, fall plantings, I mean, anything outdoors, we got you covered. So what's a good thing to plant this time of year? Besides mums? Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're trying to plant your bedding plants, like perennials and trees, it's still a good time to do it. Good time to Even do though it. the trees and plants are starting to shut down and your care is less, the root structure is, is gang busting underneath that soil. So it's the best time to plant. So I see the beautiful mums here, these yellow, boy, they're so bright. And do you leave those out until frost comes along and Mother Nature kills them, or do you try to bring them in, or what? No, you're, you're pretty much gonna, with an annual, they're gonna run the course. Um, once the, the mum is done, you're going to want to bring that in, clean the clean the pot out. A lot of people wait till spring to do that, but you want to clean it out and get it uh, get it disposed of in the compost pile. So Lowe's out here since 1926. We're in Chagrin Falls. It's not the big box store. Just come out here. What's this? Chillicothe Road here. Chillicothe Road. Road road six. So it's easy to find. All the stuff's out here. You got some great advice to get, and uh, beautiful selection of wonderful plants going right here in Ohio. Absolutely. Chad, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Coming up after the break, Natalie's creating a fall bouquet. Do you know someone going above and beyond in your community? We want to share their stories. Email us at newday at foxa.com. All right, when you think fall, you think football season, right? But you also think heading out to all of the great farms throughout Northeast Ohio. This is one you can't pass up. We are at Shady Acre Farms here in Columbia Station. Aurora's Place. Aurora, thank you for having me here. My pleasure, my pleasure. I have some 
snippers, clippers. Okay, we got our snips, we got so our, our snips, bucket. Because this is a place where you can come and pick the most beautiful fall flowers. And I know one of the things you do specialize in is dahlias, and we have them here in front of us today. Yes, we do. All right, so how when someone comes in, they just come and they well, we typically come to the have field. A, we typically have events for you pick. Okay. And so what we do, we provide a bucket and some snips and we just let you go to town. So like we can kind of get you started. Let's what do we'll it. do is cut some focal flowers and then we'll walk through and pick a couple little bonus filler flowers as we call it. I love and the sound of this. And I happened to pick the aisle where I found some bright red because they are just so beautiful. Oh, let's pick a couple other colors. Can we do an orange? Yeah, oh, let's okay. do like, these are kind of neat, like. You have this so beautifully set up for fall, oh, too. Oh, thank you, thank you. Every year, you know, pumpkins, mums, sunflower festival, and we post a lot on our community page and our social media, so people can kind of know the events we have and the you pick events. I want to just get you one fancy dahlia. Let's go get just one. No, I gotta have a fancy dahlia. Yeah. No, I yeah, have okay. to have a fancy one. <laughs> okay, this looks like my fancy one that I'm gonna go okay, with. Okay, this all right, one. I recommend it. Yep, it'll tie it together. Okay, so, yeah, down here. Maybe about there is perfect. Okay. Look at those colors. Yes, I love that oh. one. Okay, all now, right. are, is it time to go to the second field? Well, yeah, let's go over here. Okay. This is kind of more of our cutting garden where this is a little more of our specialty garden. So I wanted to start you here, but over here, is just kind of a little bit of everything. Okay. This is kind of our filler area. So the fact that you got a few focal flowers, then we kind of go through here and get some things that like make those pop. So like, look at these. you know, this is like a grain called amaranth that's beautiful. Well, look how pretty these are. This is all this celosia. And there's, you know, the pompous plume. There's just different, like they almost look like from the sea or something. Oh, but these I think would be really pretty to kind of tie I those love the dahlias orange. together. Whoa, so whoa, wait a minute. And look at these. Yes. Isn't look at that, that. Isn't it? It's like a brain, you know. Look it's called at like, that. Yeah. So <gasps> let's see like coxcomb, and there's some different ones. Okay, but... you pick. I don't want All to right. take the wrong thing. No, I want no, you to help you me. Put it, you, you pick. put it. Can I do a yellow too? Yeah, whatever like you'd like. I yellow? mean, that's, that's the beauty of the you pick. Anything you want in here, the world is your oyster. Okay. But I'm gonna I finish think, gathering up my flowers and then we're going we're gonna to go put make them in a vase and make our own. That's right. With Aurora's help, all of the flowers are now picked and it's time to assemble. Okay, perfect. I'm excited. So what I love to do is let's just focus on a couple really pretty ones and then we kind of you know, take off what's gonna be in the water. So like, that's gonna be kind of a really pretty focal one. And I love the, so, the green just adds such an element exactly. to it as well. And, and honestly, with that bud, that'll probably still bloom. So Ooh. you're gonna take that, and then you're just gonna, you know, kind of decide between here and here, and just kind of start adding, okay. and then we just fill in. So, so we cut off these. Yep. Okay. Maybe a little bit of this. Yep. And okay. then you just throw it right on the ground. So you have this set up here, for, it looks like multiple people. So this is your way of allowing the community to come in. Do they sign up to come in and do this? You know, and we, we just post it on our social media and we do, you know, maybe four or five a month. And basically it's just a, a you pick, you get a bucket, you grab some snips, exactly what we did. Yeah, so the beautiful. fillers down there, once you've created your piece and you say, hmm, Maybe I'm missing a little bit of this or a yeah, little bit a little, of that. Little zhuzh, we, we call it. We need you know, a little extra little zhuzh. zhuzh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so then people can come until that point in time so and like, they can do this pick. Yep. It's just, you know, we always create. call it like a you pick and bouquet bar. You pick and bouquet bar is yes. what it's officially called. Yes, exactly. Or if you are on the go and in a pinch, yeah. you have. Right, at the, right at the road. Yeah, beautiful roadside seven. stand. Yeah, the roadside stand we keep stocked daily. Shady Acre Farms here in Columbia Station. Aurora, I, I love this. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me. Thank you. It was Voila, it was beautiful. what do you think? What do you think? Still to come, the number one spot for family fun on the farm.
Welcome back to New Day Cleveland and our show celebrating all things fall. If you're looking for an autumn adventure, look no further. Get lost in family fun at Durthix Corn Maze. We are at Durthix Corn Maze and Farm Experience. Here you can come out to the farm you can check out our 17 acre corn maze. It has seven miles of path. So on top of the seven checkpoints that you have to help you navigate the maze, there are games in each to keep you occupied and kind of help you make your way around. King Tut is our theme this year and the company Maze Play that cuts the corn maze for us did an amazing job. The maze is for all ages. We start during daylight and we end up at night for flashlight maze. It's great for date nights. It's great for families with small kids. We do have a hotline. We'd rather have folks call the hotline to say, I'm at checkpoint five, I'm lost. Could you please come and find me? I'm at checkpoint nine, I'm tired of going around in circles. I need some help out. Could you please just come and get me? Call the number, we'll be happy to come and get you and get you out. We have a, a new jump pad this year and we have our cow train. It is a tractor hooked up to 10, I feel like they're jalopies. So they bounce a little bit. They don't ever leave the ground. They just bounce like a wiggly worm. We do have a hay, H-E-Y, wagon. We don't have any hay on our wagon anymore. And that goes around a loop around the farm so you can see a little bit more of our countryside. We do have our farm experience barn where we have lots of little tyke stuff and slides and swings. There are some animals up there as well. We have uh, the air cannon. We have targets that you can uh, shoot at. There are some fabulous uh, big slides up on the hill. We have two 300 foot zip lines. You never really leave the ground uh, very high. Uh, so if you are afraid of heights, it's not something that you need to be afraid of. So it's really something great for everyone. It's a great place to relax. You can sit down on a bench and watch your kids play, but definitely plan to have a lot of time to spend. There's food to eat while you're here. There is a ton of parking. There is wide open spaces. Most of our things are handicap accessible. Most folks don't have trouble pushing wagons or strollers or wheelchairs through the corn maze. What to expect when you come out to the farm is different for a lot of families. If you're just coming for date night and you wanna do the corn maze, I would definitely allow for a good two hours. But if you're coming out with your family, there are a lot of activities. Make sure that you have a large window to spend. We hope folks take away with them when they leave the farm our memories for sure. They want to have family memories. They want to come out to the country. They want to have lots of room to run. I feel like a safe environment is here. Definitely add Dirthix Corn Maze to your bucket list. There's a lot of fun here. Durthix Corn Maze is located on Twinsburg Warren Road in Manaway, and you can visit their website for updates on their seasonal hours. Well, here we are in the middle of Blue Jay Orchard in, are we in Hiram or are we in Burton? Where are we? Troy Township. Troy Township. Mailing address is Hiram, but Troy Township. So it's one place, Blue Jay Orchard. This is Joe, Joe Orlovsky. How long have you had this place? Four years. Four years. So somebody else planted these apple trees. How long ago did that happen, do you think? The orchard here has been over here over 80 years. Okay, well you walk around here and, and I was looking at the apples and you go, like you said, well, some people call these the ugly apples. Why did you say that to me? Uh, because we grow holistically. 
so we're not spraying chemicals and pesticides on them. So they look like a natural apple. They taste delicious, they're just not a lot to look at. Yeah, so like sometimes I go to the store and I see these big, beautiful, polished apples, like the ones they give to the school teacher all the time. Yes. Might have some kind of like bug spray on it or something like that. Yes, it You're, definitely does. That's not good, huh? That's not good. Okay, so we're in the middle of apple picking season. I thought it was almost over, but apple season is from what to what? Usually right around Labor Day is when we start, and then we're picking till November or till there's a, a frost. Mm -hmm. So we got some pickers out there, some real apple pickers. And this is the kind of place where you can come here and actually pick the apples, right? Correct. So how does it work? How does it work? You pull in, you honk the horn, or what do you do? Nope, you'll come in. We've got our market in the back. Mm -hmm. They'll come into the market. Um, I'll tell them the spiel about our ugly apples. <laughs> they'll grab bags, come out, pick what they want. When they're done, they'll come weigh it, and that's what they pay for. So how do you know which ones to pick and how do you so do it? If you just give it a quarter turn, that's how you know. It's pretty good. So you shouldn't have to tug and pull on it. Pretty good. How many varieties do you say you have? 27. 27. So like what are good for what? what like what, what's good for like eating, what's good for cooking, what? Basically they're all good for eating. Um, they're basically all good for applesauce. Certain ones are better than others for baking. Mm -hmm. So like a Cortland, a Macintosh. Uh, Empire, go, these Golden Glories that we're with are, are good uh, all, or all purpose. So they're, they're good for all three of those. Um, like our Golden Supreme would only be good for eating an applesauce because it'll turn to mush if you try mm. and bake with it. So. Okay, speaking of baking with it, like you actually have a deal here where people can come, they can stay here. Correct. And learn how to bake an apple too? Well, they'll bake it on their own, but uh, they're, they're free to walk around the property. Um, that's one of the big draws is to come stay on an orchard, an mm -hmm. actual working orchard. So they can stay overnight? They can stay overnight. Okay, so now let's get back to this baking thing here, or cooking thing. Do you know how to make it, make something with these apples? I do. Can you teach me how to do that? Sure. Boy, you got this all set up real nice here. And I gotta tell you, you were right. You said it was not a pretty apple, but when you bite it, what? It's delicious. It is so delicious and so sweet, so it's going to be great for this. So I see there's no knife to pair, so what are we going to make and how do we make them? Uh, we're making apple cinnamon muffins. Here, you take one. Okay. You show me how. How do we do this now? All right. Okay, so, we, so we've got an apple peeler. I oh, just so we peel do them. peel them. Yep. And then we're just going to grate it. Now that's great. Yep. Okay, so what do we do next? Uh, we take our dry ingredients, so we've already got our flour and our cinnamon in here. Mm -hmm. We're going to add baking powder and our salts, our sugar, we'll mix those up. What's next in there? And then we'll add, we already measured out our liquid, so we've got our oil and our milk in here and our vanilla. I love it. So this is great. So people, they come here and stay, and you've got two places, correct? two names, right? Yep, Morning Glory and Evening Primrose. When do you put the apples in? Uh, we can add the apples right now. Let's do it. So we're gonna bake them at 400? Correct. How long? Uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Hey, here's what we're gonna do now. Are you ready? Can I do the honors, Joe? Sure, that'd be fantastic. I'm gloved up and ready to go. Here we go, folks. And there they are. Look how pretty. I think you did a beautiful job. Thank you. After the break, a cozy bookshop with a spooky atmosphere. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. With the weather cooling off, it's the perfect time to curl up with a good book. And whether you're in the mood for a thriller, a chiller, or a mystery, you can find what you're looking for inside the spooky atmosphere of Black Cat Books and Oddities. Black Cat Books and Oddities is uh, just brand new. We opened back in August. And um, we're trying to just be a big part of the community, bring reading to everybody, and be a cool experience that people can take their family down to and check something out, hopefully uh, learn something new. We try to curate an experience, and I think that's the biggest goal with all the rooms, is that each one is kind of an experience and not just so much of a, you know, another room to hold books in. Each one has kind of its own personality, and I try to show that in the decoration and how things are put together, as well as the selection of books. 
the experience is kind of like a dark uh, Victorian sort of experience. We've got a lot of, you know, Edgar Allan Poe themed stuff, a lot of kind of dark academic Victorian stuff as well as uh, our Sherlock study, which has a lot of Sherlock, Agatha Christie type stuff. And then of course there's the secret garden, which is the kids room, and that's got uh, a lot of cool decoration and st stuff for kids to do. The house itself was actually built in the 1920s. I actually restored the whole house by myself pretty much from top to bottom. It was an office for many years and I just wanted to bring out its old personality. I tried my hardest to kind of bring it back to maybe closer to what it would have looked like in the 1920s, so to kind of honor that history. Everything's pretty much custom done. Everything from the decor to the antiques that we have. I mean, it's just for me and my wife's personal collection that we've found over the years. I mean, a lot of this stuff comes from estate sales that's you know been in families for generations, and now it's here at our bookstore. And you know, we have a rocking chair from the 1800s. All kinds of just really interesting and fun stuff that we have. The cool wallpaper we have. Everything is totally customized. We definitely try to have something for everybody here. One of the most exciting things is watching someone who isn't really into reading walk out with a book. And I think that we try to curate our collection in terms of having some of the highest demand books, but also something interesting that you might not have heard of before that's really well reviewed. And uh, so we just want to have everybody try to find something for themselves. We have lots of sidelines, I mean, kids' toys, puzzles, bookmarks, drinks, mugs, even some oddities, some cool stuff. A lot of local artists uh, have their stuff here, painted animal bones, all kinds of interesting stuff. One of the biggest goals of the store is also to kind of be the experience and to kind of surprise and delight people. So actually, in quite a few places throughout the store, there are things that are hidden like clues or gift cards and we want people to kind of come in and discover something that they weren't really expecting and to just be surprised by all the cool stuff that's around the store. Just being a big part of the community is my absolute favorite. I mean, getting to talk to cool people and meet interesting people and like feel like we're making a difference in some capacity uh, is really exciting. I was actually a software engineer for nine years before this and I made the transition to do something I was more passionate about and uh, I absolutely love it and don't regret a day of it. Black Cat Books and Oddities is located on South Court Street, and that's in Medina. Fall is the perfect time of year to enjoy all of the wonderful things that this season has to offer, and that includes picking pumpkins. I'm here at Schuster's Pumpkin Patch in Elyria. Doug Schuster joining me now. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I am doing great. I found the perfect pumpkin, and what I love, this is a place people of all ages can go to, and they can spend an entire day here. Yes, we have all kinds of stuff. You can do a spooky maze, small size, nothing too mm -hmm. big or too scary. Uh, we have Junkyard Jamboree, we have uh, the animals you can visit and um, pet, uh, we have the Pumpkin Theater, and a bunch of different play areas, photo opportunities, so we try to let you do all the fun fall things here. Fall is really the best time of year, yeah. and your family is involved. They're here with you every step of the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. That's gotta be a really big deal for you to know that you're teaching your children these life lessons that they're gonna be able to take with them yeah. forever. That's what we're all about. Um, we love uh, running the business as a family, not just you know my immediate family, but my uncles, and then all their kids are always here on weekends helping, chipping in. Mm -hmm a lot of people that show up here on the weekend so we need every hand on deck and our family always pulls through for us. So. All right so speaking of pulling through I love a good fall hayride. Oh. You think you could help me out with that? We have a good fall hayride. Yeah. Let's check it out. All right. Ninety-six years, four generations of doing this. The hayride portion is relatively new. Yeah, we've probably only been doing hayrides for about 10 years. Okay. Oh, look at all the corn stalks. Who comes up with all the interesting little ideas that you you? Everybody. Along it's a the way, really? family effort, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the spooky area. This is the spooky area. Spooky. And you said the ticket prices for this are very reasonable. How much is it? Yeah, so it's $6 a person. Two, are, two and under are free, and the public hay rides run every Saturday and Sunday from noon to 5 p.m. 
So after the hayride, the kids can then enjoy some of the additional activities, including the playground yep. and some of the other stuff we showed earlier. But then the adults can come in, and this is like the perfect place to decorate for fall. If you need to dress up your house for fall, wear the stop. All right, yeah. so you have all sorts of things from stuff for yep. the yard. Tin, pumpkins, mums, corn stalks. And then you Four also different sizes of straw bales. Four different four sizes. Four different, I know, Who impressive. Knew? Wow. <laughs> and then I like the homemade treats too. Yes, Can we check this absolutely. out? Because Sweet Tooth here and the cider and the caramel yeah. apples are calling my name right now. Yeah, it doesn't feel like fall until you get your cider uh -huh. and caramel apple yeah. or pumpkin rolls, salsa. So, I mean, you have I, everything. A lot of everything. Old fashioned soda. Wow. Yeah, All right. A little bit of everything. So again, you're located in Elyria. Yep. And you're on, what is this road? Murray again? Ridge Road. Murray Ridge Road. All right. So you've got the pumpkins, you have the decor, you have the activities for the kids, yep. the theater, the playground, and the hayrides. And the hayrides. What are you guys going to think of next? I don't know. I'm tired. Hopefully, <laughs> oh, maybe we'll take a break of thinking of new things for a minute. Well, thank you so much. I always enjoy coming out here. Again, this is Schuster's Pumpkin Patch in Elyria. I guarantee if you bring your family, you guys are going to have a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Still to come on New Day Cleveland, creepy candles made by local artisans. Road trips, recipes, and much more. Go to fox8.com and click on the New Day Cleveland tab. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. All hour long, we've been sharing the best spots to enjoy autumn in Northeast Ohio. And autumn means spooky season, right? Well, these candles can help you get into the spirit. Take a look. The Waxing Moon Candle Shop is a spooky, like artistic, decorative type candles, wax melts, car freshies, and things like that. Candles are made of wax, obviously, and um, the moon because I have like a spooky, like witchy type vibe. I love Halloween. Um, it's my favorite holiday. I also love like pastel colors and stuff like that, so I try to incorporate the two. I was just looking for a hobby to get into some years ago, I think like almost five years ago now. I wasn't really looking to make it into a business. I just like started making candles for fun and then I posted it on social media and everyone was like, oh my God, like I love your candles, can I buy them? And I'm like, yeah. So that's just kind of how it started. I found some cool molds online and my first one was like a little coffin shaped candle. I make like all different types, like I have just like the regular container candles like in a jar. I also have like different shapes, like I have like a cat with a third eye, I have a moon, I have a crystal ball, things like that. Um, for wax melts I have like my new ones I just came out with are like little gravestone shapes, so very like spooky. I have like all different types of scents for like uh, all year round. So I have like a lot of fall scents like pumpkin and apple. I also have a lot of fruity scents, a lot of dessert type scents. I'm working on getting more like masculine type scents eventually. I'm kind of trying to uh, hit all the different types of scents that people like. So first I would like turn on my uh, my wax melting pot and get like a bunch of wax melted and then I would measure out like all the different uh, amounts like my wax, my fragrance oil, my dye, everything that I need. Um, and then if I'm making like a candle in a mold, I would like get the mold ready, like put the wick in it and then pour the wax in the mold. If I'm making like a, a container candle, I'd put the, the wick in the bottom of it and then pour the wax in the, uh, the container. They're more unique, I guess, than like a lot of the uh, a lot of the other candles and things out there. Like a lot of candles are just like plain like colors and jars, which is fine if that's what you like, you know. But me and a lot of my friends, we all like spooky, like different type things. So there wasn't um, a lot of that around, I guess, when I started like five years ago. So I kind of wanted to uh, to get that out there. 
some of my best sellers are like the crystal ball candle or that one is the human heart candle. They're, they're both kind of similar. So they have like the hands like holding like either a crystal ball or like a human heart shape. I do a lot of the cat candles. I do a lot of the crystal ball candles. Right now the car freshies are huge. So it just kind of depends on the time of year mostly. A lot of them are, they're very intricate and detailed. They're uh, more unique than just like a plain, just like pillar candle or container candle. A lot of people use my candles as like decoration. They don't actually burn them. It feels nice. I feel like I've kind of carved out my own little niche in the community. Like I've done a lot of like local type events. I feel like just like walking around that my stuff is pretty unique and I have a lot of things that people don't already have around here. I feel really lucky that I can like, you know, make money doing something that I love. Like not a lot of people get this opportunity, so it's great. <laughs> you can shop from Waxing Moon Candles online. Okay, from one spooky segment to another, I took a look inside a restaurant dedicated to ghosts and ghouls all year long. This is the Haunted House Restaurant. I want to take this time to introduce you to my new co-host. What do you think? Just kidding, Natalie, just kidding. We're at the Haunted House out here in Cleveland Heights on the corner of Cedar and South Taylor. I'm with Andre, and this is one of those places when you drive by, it's got, it tells you it's, it's, it might be a little spooky, it might be a little scary, but it's not. As long as it's being scary, it's how good the food is, Dave. I gotta tell you, and the food really looks good. We walked in here, and you showed me some drinks here. I talk about drinks that are smoking good. This drink is smoking, what's this Yeah, thing? this is the Candyman right here, one of our top sellers right here when it comes to our potion bowls. Uh, it's an alcoholic uh, beverage for those adults, but also we have non-alcoholic ones for the kids. I love that idea. And we got this little drink here too. What, what's this one? That's the Beetlejuice. Very tasty, Dave. Very tasty. That's one of our number one sellers when it comes to the bar. It's good. Hey, so we talked about the haunted house. And then we mm -hmm. have these names that remind you of movies that are haunted. Yes, but we sir. say it's a fun time, great food. And the only thing that's scary is how great the food is. That's right. I love walking around just taking a look at all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Every corner, each spot reminds you of some movie you may have seen or some character all you may have seen when you were growing up. Huh? Yep, that's what, that's what the goal was, to make sure we pay back homage to the movies that we all grew up on. A lot of folks in Cleveland come here, of course, but we have people come from out of town because they hear about it and they want to see it. That's right, they were a destination place. I mean, we're bringing in people in from all over the United States. I mean, I wish we had a map that we can just put down places that you even heard of. Right now, we have some people in today's experience from South Dakota. Yeah. But like, South Dakota come to Cleveland for the Hunter House restaurant? You know, that's it's amazing. You gotta get one of those things. You make the pins little skulls or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that's little, a good little, idea. Little snakes or little cobras. So every time somebody come in, they can pinpoint where they've been at. Yeah. That, that's cool. Hey, so they're open, you're open what? Every day of the week. Except for Mondays. Except for Mondays. And, right. and great dinners. And we talk about places to go for brunch sometimes, because I don't think there's that many great places for brunch around mm -hmm. town. There's a few people doing it. You're doing it here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 3. We have a great brunch menu from our chef, Super Chef Darnell, Super Chef Ferguson, as well as Chef Aaron also. We talked about how great the food was, so we're showing you brunch items. They have dinner items that are great also, but just tell us about this and how you got the name. So this is the Pennywise right here. So it's a red waffle sandwich with chicken, candy bacon, a sunny side up egg uh, with our maple heat. We call it blood sauce, but you can get this for a uh, brunch or dinner. So it's, a, it's called a brenner item, so you can get a brunch or dinner. Yeah, and I know a lot of people do chicken waffle thing. They do it at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter, right? Yep. And this thing here looks scary good. This is scary good. That's one of our uh, brunch number one sellers, the lobster BLT. Lobster um, BLT? Lobster BLT with a side of hash brown. This Let is me just chip right that here. baby up for you a little bit. Yes, Look at sir. that. Fried Look what's in there. Fried lobster tail right there. That bacon saying, bite me. <laughs> you better go ahead and get it, Dave. <laughs> you better go ahead and get it. That looks really good. And look at this, folks. This, yeah, is, a, this is a brunch item. Is this also a dinner item? This is not a dinner. These two are only for brunch. So These two are only for brunch. This is called our sea biscuit. And this is a lobster tail with scallops on a... Uh, we have some uh, biscuit right here with some garnish, uh, lemons and spinach garnish on the side of it. This is a good one also right here. So how long have you guys been here? Uh, we're going on three years now. Three years. That's right. And uh, you know, you play all kinds of different music and the music is sort of like reminiscent of... Uh, yeah, we play a horror, we play a horror movie uh, soundtrack. We also play some feel good music, yeah. top 40. Uh, Ryan does a great job of giving us a good playlist. A lot of people come in here and they say, I want this playlist right here because it gives you that feel good, yeah. but it also brings you back to the horror movie that you like. 
I'm gonna tell you, I gotta pick this baby up so you guys get a good look at this thing. This is something great. And you know, all the people that work here are all dressed in, in costume. Absolutely, that's, that's, that, that's their uniform right there. And one of the things I really noticed too is like the kids that come in are all dressed up, but the food is, you know, great food for kids, but this, we're talking about some grown up good stuff, some great drinks and a lot of fun. Yes, sir. The Haunted yes, sir. House. It's an experience. We also have trivia, we do games. Uh, we do, um, we have characters walking around, Michael Myers will walk around, you got Chucky walking around, you got Billy the Puppet riding around in his tricycle, we do all that throughout the uh, brunch ship and dinner ship. So, you know, if you like Halloween, it's Halloween year round here, man. 365 Halloween. This is scary, we give it a try. Hey, thanks a lot for having us at the Haunted House. Thank Cleveland you. Heights, corner of South Taylor and Cedar, right? That's right, come see us. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>when you think of fall, you think of cool air, changing leaves, and of course, you gotta think about hard apple cider. And when we're talking cider, we're talking about my friends here at Arsenal Cider House, located in beautiful Ohio City. Jody O'Donnell is the district manager. Jody, hello. Hello there. It is so good to be back because the first time I was here, I tried a little bit of everything and I enjoyed everything. So for people who aren't familiar, you guys opened up how long ago? Uh, about three years ago at this location. All right, so this location here in Cleveland, you started in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It was so successful that you guys said, we have to open in Cleveland. And people are really raving about your ciders. You make a lot of this stuff in house, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. We do three or four at each location, uh, but we have about 40 flavors that rotate throughout the year. All right, so why don't you talk about some of the flavors on this flight because everything looks delicious. It is so delicious. We have an apple lemon, uh, super refreshing. We have a bourbon vanilla, one of my personal favorites. We have a, an apple pumpkin for the season and a sparkling rosé. Talk about the fermentation process. I'm not as familiar with how cider is made. I know a little bit more about the way beer and wines are made. So how does this uh, get made? It's basically a sparkling wine, so it's fermented just like a wine. Okay, and for people who have never been here, I have to tell you, it, it's almost like you're walking back in time, but it's still very trendy because you've got a whole Civil War type thing going on, don't you? Yeah, yeah, so our original location was right across the street from Arsenal Park, mm -hmm. which was an active arsenal during the Civil War. So we took the Arsenal name and the Civil War theme. And you guys also have events that are held here? Absolutely, yeah, we do uh, trivia nights every Friday and live music every Saturday. I love live music. Now, since it's fall, which one is the pumpkin one? This is the pumpkin right, right there. Because I was never a pumpkin person, but all of a sudden, I don't know, it's I happening. just appreciate it. So it is happening. Let's try it again. It is so, so good. You taste the nutmeg, the cinnamon, all the pumpkin-y flavors, and I don't even know if that's what you guys really put you in it, it, but Absolutely. hey, I, I can spice, make my yeah. own cider. <laughs> and you said your wife loves this one, the right? The lemon, yeah, she texted right, So what me. is it about the lemon? It's just super refreshing. All if right. it's a nice hot day. Let's try. Or if it's a cool, or brisk it's cool fall day. day. Let's see. That one, that one reminds me of champagne. It's like a lighter champagne. Agreed, yeah. So this would really be perfect if you are just looking for different places to go, different places to visit, especially in the fall when the scenery is so beautiful, but maybe you're thirsty, you're hungry. Really quickly, talk about some of the food you offer. Some of the food, we do small plates. We have hummus, veggie plates. We have soft pretzels. We also do all kinds of sandwiches, panini style, uh, Cubanos, chicken sandwiches, Italian. And for people who are saying, okay, I got to check this place out. Again, you're located on Lorraine Avenue in Ohio City. What are your hours? We are Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, 4 to 10. Uh -huh. Friday, 4 to 11. Saturday, all day, 10 or 12 to 11. I have to tell you, I think I'm a cider girl now. Yes. I, I mean, all of these, like, but the pumpkin, the pumpkin during fall. 
You gotta <laughs> try it. ArsenalCiderHouse.com. Jody, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that does it for our show, celebrating autumn from pumpkin patches to apple orchards. We hope we inspired you to get out and enjoy the season in Northeast Ohio. I'm David Moss, and on behalf of Natalie Herbeck, that's right, we'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland.